So, Jen, are you able to see? Yeah. You sure? Let me hear if you want. <laughs> um. Okay. So, okay. So you're in the practical. Okay. You're sitting down here, and the time is timing. Okay. You barely have time to read the questions, and here, the peanut vessel, and you're like, oh shoot. Does this top, bottom, left, right? I'm gonna look at dorsal, ventral, right, left. So the first thing you want to learn when you're dealing with the heart is to orient yourself. You need to differentiate top from bottom, left from right. Yes? Okay, there are two ways to do this. One, the first one, is the thickness of the walls. Now based on, the look at the ventricles, yeah? Based on where the blood, the heart is pumping the blood to, do you expect the right side to be thicker or the left side to be thicker? Yeah. The left. Yeah. Why? Because it has a to blood the to the whole body. Yes, exactly. The left ventricle is pumping blood to the rest of the whole body, whereas the right is only pumping blood to where? The lungs. The lungs. So you expect the left side to be thicker. And look at, look at, over here the left side is much thicker than the right side. It's true. Okay, I'm not making this up. But um, I don't like using that method because it's relative. Your thick may be my thin. So what I do is I always use the moderator band. See it? It's not a V. It's a moderator band. Band? Oh, yeah. Okay. okay. See it? Mm -hmm. This is the moderator band and it only exists in the right side of the heart. If you look at the left, uh -uh. There's nothing there. You look at the right, that's the moderator band blocking your, my blood probe. Okay, it's really obvious. So that lets you know that you're looking at the right side. So that's all fine and dandy. What about dorsal and ventral? If you have the moderator band on your right side, you know you're looking at the dorsal surface of the ship's heart. You guys get me? Moderator band on the right. This is my right. I know this is the dorsal surface of the ship's heart. So the ship's like this. Okay, and this is ventral. On the other hand, if I open it here and the moderator band is on my left, that means I'm looking at which surface? Ventral. Ventral, ventral which means that the ship's standing over me with its legs like this. <laughs> All right, are we clear on that? Everyone comfortable? Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we know this is which side? Right. right. This is dorsal. So you have your atrium, ventricle, atrium, ventricle. Yes? Okay. So the first thing you need to know, this is the right atrium. Yes? Mm -hmm. What are the vessels associated with the right atrium? Vena cava. Vena cava. Carries what blood? Deoxygenated. So how you learn, yeah? Uh, feel free to do this um, in later laps or maybe later after I'm done. Is you take a blunt probe. You want to look into the space, gently look for holes, and then just probe it with your blunt probe to ID the vessels. You see it? Tip of my blunt probe. Yes? Mm -hmm. So that is one of your vena cava. That's your anterior vena cava. Okay? Now, let's look at the inside the atrium again. All right? Apart from that, you also see two holes here. Yes, everyone? Mm -hmm. Two holes? Okay. So let's poke our blood probe through and see where the holes go to, alright? This is the first hole, and this is another vessel. What vessel do you think this is? Anyone? Where's it coming from? It's coming into the atrium, the right atrium. That's the vena cava as well. There are two vena cavas. Kind of a trick question there. There's anterior and posterior. Okay. Now let's look at another. There's another hole here, yes? Let's poke through the bottom hole and see where it leads to. Do you see my blunt probe? Everyone? Yes? That is your coronary sinus. If you look at a lab with some shit, bring a lab with some shit, yeah? If you look at a lab assembly sheet, that is on number 10. Okay, 
locate the opening of the coronary sinus ventral to the opening of the posterior vena cava. Let's see again. Here is your posterior vena cava, yes? Everyone see it? Mm -hmm. If you look at the hole, and there's another hole below it, that is your coronary sinus. It is a large vein which collects all of the blood returning from the myocardium and discharges it into the right atrium. So, the heart itself pumps blood to the rest of the body, yes? But the heart itself is an organ which requires blood. So this is actually the vein, you can see it as the vena cava of the heart itself. So it collects all the... So the heart itself uses blood, yes? So this coronary sinus right here is where all the blood that is used by the heart is collected and then it discharges back into the right atrium to join the rest of the used blood from the vena cava so it can go back and pick up fresh supplies from the lungs. You guys getting me? Okay. So it goes down from the right atrium into the right ventricle. Okay. Do we come by a valve in between the right atrium to the right ventricle? What's the name of the valve? Tricuspid valve. Perfect. Okay. So now we're in the right ventricle <coughs> and we've passed through our tricuspid valve. Um, the blood at this point, is it oxygenated or deoxygenated? Deoxygenated. De Very good. So my next question, what is the vessel associated with the right ventricle? The pulmonary artery. Perfect. Brings blood to the? Lungs. Lungs. Okay. So let's look for a vessel. Um, I don't see any vessel. Where is it? Is it behind? Wait for it goes up all the way and over here so that is your pulmonary trunk which is actually leading from your right ventricle now if only anything if only everything in life is so simple yeah like you know one vessel leads here one vessel leads here one vessel leads here but it's not this one makes a u-turn so it goes all the way up here okay so if you read your lab assignment sheet locate the pulmonary trunk on the ventral surface of the heart this vessel emerges from the anterior ventral surface of the right ventricle and bifurcates into two pulmonary arteries. Two pulmonary arteries because... Two lungs. Two lungs, perfect. So let's look. Pulmonary trunk is supposed to be on the ventral surface of the heart. Is that true? How do you tell dorsal ventral? By the, the band. The band. Okay, so the band's on my right. So what does that mean? Am I looking at dorsal or ventral here? Dorsal. dorsal. So this is the... Ventral. ventral surface and this is indeed the pulmonary <coughs> trunk okay so you learn the light with some shit doesn't lie okay it bifurcates into two pulmonary arteries so this is your pulmonary trunk it goes off into two pulmonary arteries you can't see two here because it's been cut but if you observe yeah you can see that here is one and this one leads to the other one yes see okay let me open it up I open it up you can see it goes kind of like a Y shape. One's going this way, the others, if I close it back, the other's going this way. One to the left lung, one to the right lung. Do you guys see it? Anyone doesn't see it? So, again, what is this? Pulmonary trunk bifurcates into two pulmonary arteries, one on the left and one on the right. Okay? Alright. So, at this stage, blood is what? Oxygenated, deoxygenated. 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 So this goes into the lungs, and then the the lungs um, diffusion occurs. Simple squamous epithelium, if you guys remember, diffusion. So it comes back to your <coughs> what? Atrium. Left atrium. Through what vessel? Your pulmonary vein. Pulmonary veins, because the vein is bringing blood back into the heart. And in this case, our blood is special. It happens to be oxygenated or deoxygenated. Oxygenated. oxygenated, perfect. So let's look for the left side. This is the left side, okay? This is the left atrium. This is the left ventricle. So any vessel that you can find emerging from this left atrium is your pulmonary vein. There's one here. You should know that there are four pulmonary veins, two from each lung, but this one's cut really close so you can see it, okay? How many pulmonary veins are there again? Four. Four, two from each lung, and they carry what kind of blood? Oxygen. Perfect. So as the blood comes down from the left atrium into the left ventricle, they go by a valve. Yes? Mm -hmm. What is the valve called? 
bicuspid two left is four others yeah mm -hmm. so let's look okay now about the valve themselves you need to know that these are the cusp of the valves over here and over here okay yes mm -hmm. this is the cusp of the valve over here you see the string like structures that connect the cusp of the valve to the ventricle wall this is called chordae tendinae can everyone see so one more time this is what what is this careful <laughs> that is the cusp of the valve okay now this chordae tendinae are anchored to these things here these muscles here those are your papillary muscles so named because they're nipple shaped okay so chordae tendinae the nipple shaped papillary muscles and these are your cusp of the wells okay comes down here left ventricle and at this point is your blood oxygenated or deoxygenated? Oxygenated. Okay, what is the vessel associated with the left ventricle? Aorta. Aorta. So if I were to put my blood probe up, each I should be going towards the aorta. Which is true because this is the largest vessel in the body, the largest artery in the body. So that's kind of like the big freeway before it branches off to all the smaller interstate freeways. Okay? So if this is your aorta, yeah? I want you guys to know this vessel, which is linked to the aorta, is called the brachiocephalic trunk. Since it's closely associated with the aorta, is it oxygenated blood or deoxygenated blood? Oxygenated. oxygenated. Can anyone hazard a guess as to what's the function of the brachiocephalic trunk? Uh, to bring blood to the lungs. Mm. Yes, exactly, oh. the brain. So you'll learn this um, later in the... In the um, rat, yeah? The aorta brings blood to the rest of the body, like your digestive system, your respirate, um, your reproductive system and all that. Your brachiocephalic trunk is, leads to your um, carotid arteries, your vertebral arteries that run through your cervical um, vertebrae, and your jugular. All that is from your brachiocephalic trunk. Okay? So brachiocephalic trunk, aorta, what is this again? Artery. Pulmonary trunk is the main, the one vessel. If it's distinctly left and right, then it becomes pulmonary artery. Okay? Pulmonary artery is an artery. So what kind of blood does it carry? Deoxygenated. Deoxygenated. It's the pulmonary, so it's special. You need to know... Um, you will need to know the epicardium, myocardium, and the endocardium. That's very easy. So, the epicardium is simply the outermost layer, as its name implies, epi. So, if I take a pin, poke through here, first layer pierce would be your epicardium. The myocardium, myo meaning muscle, is all the muscular parts of the heart. Right here is myocardium. Yes? Endocardium is simply the last shiny layer. That's right here. Endocardium. Okay. Okay. Now, um, you want to know the intraventricular groove and all that. Um, that's just separating the left, um, ven right ventricle from the left ventricle. So that's kind of like this groove here. Those are the intraventricular grooves. Okay. Separates the right ventricle from the left ventricle. Is that first heart cut on the? Is that? The this is the intraventricular oh. groove. Okay. Um, one more thing I want to point to your attention. You've learned about the tricuspid valve and the bicuspid valve. We don't have any problems with where that is. You should be aware that there are valves associated with the aorta and the pulmonary trunk. Okay? The pulmonary trunk has the pulmonary semilunar valve. Okay? So let's look at the pulmonary trunk. This is the pulmonary trunk, yes? Open it, you should be able to see the cusp of the semilunar valve. This is the pulmonary semilunar valve. Okay? Just memorize it by location. 
I mean, you know, Rarell is at the base of.